All right. Um, the other thing that we need to talk about in this section is piecewise functions. Now, piecewise functions, uh, I, I give these the nickname uh, Franken functions. The reason I call them Franken functions is because you kind of use bits and pieces of other functions to kind of cobble together this function. Um, that's why they're called piecewise functions, because you, you're taking little pieces, okay? So let's take a look at this piecewise function right here. Now, what this is doing is it's basically giving you two sets of rules to follow. So it's saying f of x is 2x as long as x is less than 5. And f of x is x squared as long as x is greater than or equal to 5. So, for example, if I asked um, f of 2, the first thing you do is you check to see if x is less than 5 or if x is greater than or equal to 5. In this case, it's less, so we're going to follow this first rule. So it's going to be 2 times 2. Okay, so this will be 2 times 2, which is 4. We followed the first rule because our x was less than 5. Now, if I do f of, I don't know, f of 10, okay, well, is 10 less than 5? No, it's not. 10 is greater than or equal to 5, so we're going to follow this second set of instructions. So we say, okay, 10 squared equals 100. Now, these, these piecewise functions, these Franken functions, okay, they look pretty weird when you graph them, because it literally looks like you stuck one graph on top of a totally different graph, um, and it kind of makes for weird, weird, weird looking graphs. My suggestion when you graph these, um, first of all, I would use a Desmos because I'm gonna show you how to use that in a bit. But if you were trying to graph these by hand, basically graph both functions individually, okay? So 2x, we know what that looks like. That's a linear function with a slope of two. So I'm going to graph that real quick, okay? Um, this is gonna be a rough sketch. I'll show you what this looks like formally on Desmos in a minute. Now the other graph is x squared. You do that in a different color so you can see. Okay, so these are two separate functions here. Okay, now this first one, this 2x, we're going to be following this rule as long as x is less than 5. So here we go, we've got this graph, we've got this graph, and then as soon as x is 5, we say we're not going to follow that rule anymore. We're going to stop right here where x equals 5. Okay? x squared, this graph right here, it says we're going to follow this rule as long as x is greater than or equal to 5. So if x is greater than 5, we're going to use this. But the moment that we get less than 5, we're not going to use this anymore. So we're going to follow this linear pattern, linear pattern, linear pattern, until we get to 5. And then when we get to 5, we're going to hop onto that, that other pattern, that, uh, that x squared pattern. So you use the two graphs together to, um, to make up your piecewise function. Let me do a scarier one. This one's scary because it's got three different things, but it's the same concept. So um, we've got three different rules here. We've got x plus 5, uh, absolute value of x, and x minus 5. But we use them under different circumstances. We'll use the first one when x is less than or equal to 10. Um, we'll use this one when x is in between negative 10 and 10. And we'll use this one when x is bigger than 10. So let's try one. Um, let's see. If um, x is 7, okay, if we're plugging 7 in, is 7 less than negative 10? No, it's not. 
Is seven in between negative 10 and 10? Yes, it is. So we're gonna use absolute value of X. So absolute value of seven is seven. That would be our output here. Okay, F of 12 is 12 less than or equal to 10? Nope. Is 12 in between these two? Nope. Is 12 bigger than 10? Yes. So we're gonna use this third rule because that's the rule we're supposed to use when X is bigger than 10. So 12 minus five, also equals seven, a little coincidence there. Um, and any number that was less than negative 10, for instance, negative um, 13, okay? We're gonna follow this rule right here, okay? Um, negative 13 plus five, I believe that's negative eight, okay? So we're gonna use the rule based on what it is, uh, what it says to do. Let's try a graph real quick. Again, this is just a sketch. We'll do the real thing on Desmos here in a minute. X plus five, I know what this looks like. This is a linear function where the y-intercept is positive five, okay? Absolute value, I know what that looks like. That's a little V thing here, okay? And then, uh, X minus five, again, that's uh, a linear, except for the y-intercept is negative five. So what we do is we restrict these to the domain that is described here. So this first one, this, this black line, okay? We're gonna use this when X is less than negative 10. So we're only gonna use it from here and beyond this absolute value. We're only gonna use this between negative 10 and positive 10. So we're only gonna use it in this little section right here. And the last one, okay, X minus five. We're only gonna use that when X is bigger than 10. So whenever X starts to get bigger than 10, we're gonna start using this. Now be careful, this has an equal to here, and so does this, so I'm gonna put my solid dots there, and then for my absolute value, I'm gonna put those hollow circles because um, that's not equal to there. So hopefully you see why I call these Franken functions. It's like little pieces of different functions, which is, again, why they're called piecewise functions. And these show up different places. Uh, for example, your income tax, how much tax you pay, the, the formula that, that you're paying depends on how much money you make. So the formula changes uh, at, a certain, uh, at a certain place, at a certain bracket. Um, so these kind of formulas will show up um, randomly um, in places, especially where um, we're inventing things where it's something that's not natural.